Hi, welcome back to the breadboard. In previous videos, we've been looking at the IoT 2020 from um, Siemens that's distributed by RS Components. We've talked a bit about its capabilities and I've demonstrated how to load up some Linux, Node Red, MQTT, and things like that, and taking you through the basic specifications. One of the claims that is made of the IoT 2020 is its ability to run Arduino sketches natively. You can actually fire up the Arduino IDE and then compile your sketch, push it straight to the device, and it will run. As you can see here, I'll put in a closer up view, it has an Arduino compatible um, Uno header, which is the two rows of um, 0.1 inch pitch connectors, with one of them slightly offset, so you can't just use basic bearer board, but you can get lots of prototyping boards and various other things, or you can just use flying wires and plug things in. What I'd like to show you today is how to hook up some displays of various kinds. I have a seven segment LED display um, which is using its eight digit and it's got seven segments in each one. This you've seen in old alarm clocks and things like that. And also some modern industrial panels still tend to use them because they're nice and bright and easy to read. I've got a LCD display which is four lines by 20 characters and I've also got an OLED display. Now the LED one hooks up using the spy bus and the two I2C ones um, the LED and the, the LCD and the OLED, they both hook up using I2C. They just happen to be on separate addresses so that I can use them both simultaneously. The other one I'm going to show you is simply using an LED and driving it with a PWM signal so that we can uh, vary its intensity. So let's go and have a closer look. We'll look at what software is needed. Obviously, you need an Arduino IDE and um, we have the latest image from uh, the Siemens website for the firmware on the IoT 2020. So let's go and see whether things will work right out of the box and if not, what do we need to do to get it running? And then we will try out a few of these demos. Let's go have a closer look. So I have my little helper here to hold some of the displays for me. As I said, we've got a eight digit seven segment LED display. This one is hooked up to the I2C standard connectors on the board of the IoT 2020. We have the four line uh, 20 character LCD display. This is a standard one. Um, what I've done with it is I've added um, a I2C to 1602, well actually it works with the 1604 and 2004 as well, but I2C to parallel um, adapter. And what this has is um, a, 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 an I2C to 8-bit parallel output you can use for inputs or outputs and we're using it of course for outputs in this case. And then the third device is this little OLED from um, SparkFun. Um, it's uh, got I2C interface on as well, all the electronics on the back and it's also 3.3 5-volt uh, compatible, so we're running it on 5 volts here, and it has a regulator on the back to uh, provide its own internal voltages. So all of these devices are running on 5 volts. I've adjusted the jumper on the IoT 2020 to have 5-volt compatible lines um, on the Arduino header, and if I just zoom in a second to the main board here, you'll see that I've just um, jumpered an LED between pin pin 9 and ground as well and I will explain why that actually will work without risk of blowing anything up in a little while um, but anyway suffice to say that there is a white LED on there that we're going to be doing some PWM with to show you that you can do all three of these simultaneously. Now what I also have on here down here is a little adapter. What this is doing is just allowing me to um, feed 5 volts separately from a USB adapter because you don't want to draw this much power out of the um, basic unit. You will start overloading and you potentially can cause some noise issues. So I've just supplying these displays separately with its own power and this allows me to distribute that power to the different devices but also um, connect multiple I2C devices. So my, let's just zoom out a little bit. 
my LCD display and the OLED display, they're both I2C and they both plug into this adapter and then the I2C lines go up to the IoT2020 up here to pins A4 and A5 for the I2C. There's a ground line comes down just to make sure we have a, that's the black wire coming down here, just to make sure we have the common ground for everything. And then the spy wires um, for the LED display tap off the power from this board as well. So these three devices are all sharing the um, separate USB adapter for their power. Uh, what I've also got hooked up here, if you look, there's a um, connector coming out the bottom of the IoT2020, which goes out and is plugged into the USB port of my uh, Surface over here, so that I can use it just like a regular uh, Arduino Uno or something like that. And that's the hope that we're going to be able to do just that, and as simple as that. So the trick now is to fire up the Arduino IDE and um, see what we have to do to it to get things working over there. And there may be some work we need to do on the Linux side of things too, but let's just take one step at a time. So I'm gonna now um, dual screen basically. I'm gonna superimpose the video um, and what I'm doing on the computer onto the, uh, what you're seeing now so that we can watch them both going together. So I've got the Arduino IDE loaded. I have version 1.6.11. So I know that there is a later one. So I'm just going to load that up. Um, just going to download it from the Arduino website, install it, and then we will continue from there. So I'll come back to you when that's done. So in order to make that happen, you just go to the arduino.cc website. Uh, click on Downloads, and the latest one currently is our, the Arduino 1.6.12, and I'm going to download the Windows one using the Windows installer, so I'm just going to click on that, and uh, just download, and I'm just going to run through the install, and I'll come back to you once it's done. So the Arduino IDE, if you've already got one loaded and you're doing 1.6.12, it will ask you if you want to unload, or it'll ask you to unload the previous one. It'll do it automatically uh, before it installs the new one. So it's not going to leave you two copies now. It used to be able to let you have m multiple copies. So if you did want to do that, you would have to pick a different installation method, maybe by bringing down the zip file instead of the Windows installer. Okay, so that's it installed. So let's just fire it up. Um, interesting little thing here. It's just popped up. Uh, a little message to me saying install the package to use your Intel Galileo. Now I've mentioned in previous videos that the IoT 2020 is actually based on the same chipset as the Intel Galileo. It's just built to uh, industrial standards for the board and uh, Siemens has um, perhaps done things slightly differently but the basic chipset and um, functionality of the board is exactly the same as the Galileo and the, at the level that we want to work at it with then um, you know it, it to all intents and purposes it will work as a Galileo so what we want to do even if you don't get prompted um, if you go into tools and look at your board all right there's a board manager here that allows you to pick different boards to load up for quite a different range what we look have when we look down here these are all basic Arduino official boards and what we don't have is one that can use the um, Intel X1000 chip. So what we can do is we can go into Board Manager. I'm just going to ignore this little note here right now. And I can put in here i586, which I know that is what the um, Linux and the basic Quark X1000 processor uses. Uh, and right away we see the Intel i586 board, so we pick that and then pick install. Now specifically even though it's an X1000 processor what matters here is that within the Arduino IDE there are mapping files that tell the wiring application that you write which is used for the Arduino IDEs how to relate that to the physical pins that are used on the specific uh, I.O. of the device that you're targeting. So an Arduino Uno uh, has obviously completely different hardware than an X1000 
um, sock chip or a Raspberry Pi or even a Yun and other things. So there is files that are header files that are used um, it, along with the compiler in order to sort out all those differences. The Arduino IDE hides a lot of that from you so you don't have to worry about it. And that's one of the reasons why it makes a great beginner uh, programming environment when you're just getting to know the hardware and things. It actually hides a lot of the nuances of the hardware from you. And you just have to get on with programming and say, I want to send this out of digital uh, output one, or I want to read from analog, you know, two or three or whatever it might be. You actually don't care what the physical pins are on the CPU that's doing that. You just need to know what header they come out on after the compiler's done all of its work. All right, so this is done. Let's just close this. So this is the program I've already got written for this. I'm, you know, I will make this available so that you can download it yourself. Anyway, when you go into Tools, which is the same for any Arduino sketch that you're doing, you need to pick the board that you're using. And now, when we look down here, you can see all the ones that were there before are still there. But now we have these additional Arduino i586 boards. We have the Intel Galileo, which is the original um, Galileo, and we have an Intel Galileo Generation 2. That's the one you want to pick to be able to use the IoT 2020. Uh, the same thing will apply for the 2040, of course, as well. Now we need to pick the serial port for use of this. And the only one that's connected right now is COM3, and it's already identified it as a Galileo. And that's how come the IDE knew to prompt me to say, hey, you don't have the Galileo hardware drivers installed. Do you want to load them? So you just pick COM3. Now, theoretically, I should be able to, um, com this program will compile. I've already tried it on a different computer. It's not very long. Um, I'm using Seed Studio for the OLED. I'm using uh, drivers for the Mac 7219, which are all here. And I've got some drivers that I modified a long, long time ago that uses the I2C to parallel um, 8574 chip, which is a common chip that you can buy from most places to drive the full line by 20 character LCD. Um, I haven't actually, originally I was doing this with a 16 by two line. I actually haven't changed this yet to do the 20 by 4. So let me just change this while I remember and save that. So what we're going to do here, right off the bat, all I'm going to do is try and compile this and send it up to the IoT 2020 and let's see what happens if any of these things actually come to life. Um, because this is uh, a fairly standard out-of-the-box install and I haven't done anything yet that um, is to do with loading additional drivers or anything for this. So let's just hit the compile and upload and see what happens. So it's compiling the sketch. So there's a couple of things we're looking for. One is will the sketch compile properly, which it has. Will it upload properly, which it says it's uploading. And it's telling me that I've got an error while I was doing the upload. So trap for young players, as Dave Jones would say, and also in this case, older ones alike, is that if things don't seem to be working properly, uh, try reboot everything. In this case, my issue was actually my Surface laptop. There was a big Windows update that happened and I hadn't rebooted yet and it was causing resource errors and things like that. So the errors that I was getting on the bottom of the Arduino IDE were more to do with my Windows machine and not to do with the IoT 2020. So I've just rebooted my machine and allowed the updates to be installed correctly and lo and behold, the sketch went in first time with no errors. So note to self, when you start seeing silly little errors that you don't expect, just reboot. Anyway, so just to show you, I'll just hit the upload again. This is the basic sketch, and um, I'll upload it. Now you can already see there that the light is actually now blinking, but I just wanted to show you that's now done, and it's already done the uploading as well. So now let's flip to my original sketch, which is um, this one. Now what I have here is pretty much everything. I've called it the kitchen sink for a reason. I have spy drivers loaded. I have the wire, which is the I2C drivers. 
I have a liquid crystal library which uses the 8574 I2C to 8-bit parallel um, driver. It expects the 8574 chip to be on the back of the LCD. I'm using the Seed Studio OLED.H driver which would actually be the one to drive the OLED board down here. So I can get it all in screen. There we go. So the OLED board that's at the bottom of the screen here, this one. And then I've got a bunch of um, setups for the LED 8 segment display. Um, a little send byte, which is to send byte to the spy bus for the 7 segment display. Just a simple little wrapper. We have the setup, which has got the um, things like spy begin, um, initializes the Max 7219, which is the controller on the back of that card. Um, initialize the LCD for a 20 by 4, and I know it says 16 by 2, but it's exactly the same stuff. Um, initialize the OLED display, 128 by 64 pixels, and um, a little routine for outputting the number to the 7 segment 8 digit LC, uh, LED display. And then our main loop is just counting up and trying to print that number on all of these different devices. Now when I do print the number 2, one of the other things I'm doing is outputting to the analog pin um, the number ORD with FF. So uh, digital the PWM pins on the Arduinos are only 0 to 255 count. So I'm just masking off everything except the most significant, sorry, least significant um, eight bits of that counter that's going up so that the PWM output should ramp up to full brightness, go back to zero, ramp up to full brightness on a fairly frequent basis. So without any further ado, because this is not about Arduino programming, it's about getting Arduino sketches to work on the IoT 2020, let's update this one, or upload it, should I say, and see what happens. So I just click the upload now, it's compiling. <clears throat> That's done, and it's now uploaded, and lo and behold, the LED display is quite happily working away there, so we know the spy bus is working just great. The LED, let's just let that back that out a little bit, see if we can see both, is actually slowly ramping up. Now, brightness of LEDs to the human eye is not linear. And this is simply doing a linear count from 0 to 255 and then back to zero again. So you can see that it is changing brightness, right? Just reset there. But unfortunately, even when the count on a digital um, an analog output PWM pin is even just, you know, a very, very low, like one, two or three, it is still going to be quite bright. The difference between, you know, one and two is very notable to the human eye, the difference between say 128 and 255 is almost non-notable to the human eye. That's why normally when I do uh, brightness controls, I will do a, um, an exponential curve to try and more closely match the response of the human eye and to give a more even uh, increase in brightness of LEDs. Anyway, just suffice to say though that it is happily working and ramping that LED brightness from 0 up to 255 using PWM. So we've now proven that we've got the SPI bus and the standard PWM control working quite happily. But as you can see, <clears throat> the I2C portion is not working. So let's just go to a terminal and let's see if we can figure out why that's not working. And I actually know why already, but uh, we'll go through it anyway and have a look. So let me just bring up a um, terminal. Okay, so I've just gone into Putty Session and I've connected to the IoT 2020. And we're going to go and look in the dev devices. So the uh, CD backslash dev and if we ls in here we should see um, some i2c devices in here as well if the i2c bus is up and running 
Now, I don't have the I2C tools listed at the moment, but we can just scan down here and look to see if we can see any I2C um, devices. And as you can see here, we can't. So what we need to do, and this has been documented a little bit on the uh, Siemens site to do with the IoT 2020, uh, and the 2040, of course, is we need to run a mod probe. Um, helps if I spell it correctly. Mod, and all you need to do is mod probe space i2c-dev. I had the uh, statement slightly wrong there, but now it's corrected. So to get the i2c up and running, we just do that command, and it should make an entry. Now I will be posting how to make this permanent as well. Uh, you can edit a file under one of the folders um, for mod probe. There is a list of devices that it starts up automatically and I'll document that in the post to show you how to do it. Um, but for now that should now show up uh, I2C devices. Let's just grab it through and see what we find. So we now got IoT I2C-0 showing up which now should allow uh, my I2C program to work. I think the mob probe reset my spy bus too by the look of it. Um, anyway, so if I just do a list there you'll see that we will have the I2C0 right there listed and it wasn't listed before. So let's go back to the Arduino IDE and we'll re-upload my program. Um, probably doesn't like the fact that I've changed some things here. Oh, my port has changed. Try that. And we've got them working. So that's all it took to get those working. Let me just put these the right way around. So there is that with the counter. And there is, so we have that one counting up, exact same count as this one. And that's on the I2C bus. And we should also now have, if it will focus, this one counting up on the OLED display in the exact same way. So let's see if I can hold that there. We've got both of those counting up. And so we have the I2C working with the mod probe having been declared. We have the LED, which is on the spy bus working, and we have the PWM working as well. So as a gateway device, the IoT 2020, of course, wouldn't normally have um, GPIO kind of hardware on it. I mean, you might want to put some LED indicators maybe on a panel that just gives you a status of some remote process or something like that but it wouldn't normally be controlling actual industrial equipment or anything directly as a gateway. It can because of the um, Arduino compatible headers. You can plug in hardware there, or you could plug something into the USB port or the ethernet and have it talk to it through say Modbus or something. In this case, I'm just demonstrating how easy it is to get some uh, various display types, whether they be OLED, LED or LCD up and running and how easy it is to get an LED uh, PWM'd. Now the reason why the LED is fairly safe to work the way I have it plugged in, there is no resistor, is that the chip that's actually driving the GPIO pins is not the CPU itself. It's actually got a serial to parallel 16-bit chip in on the board. It actually has the capability of safely driving LEDs directly with a current limit built into the chip. So there we have it, demonstrating PWM, SPI bus usage, and I2C bus usage. And the I2C bus actually has two devices on two different addresses being talked to at the same time. So let's... Um, the last thing I think is just to quickly show you how to get the I2C bus up and running permanently right away. 
So let me just go and get the file that I need for that. I actually wrote it down on one of my documents. Okay, these are all my notes that I've been collecting over time on how to do things with the IoT 2020. And what I have down here somewhere, all of this has also, by the way, been transcribed into the um, Design Spark website on RS Components uh, community channel. So if you want to see this, just follow my links and uh, you will get all of this information f um, in that, that way you can copy and paste it. I haven't made this into a complete one-stop script or anything yet. Uh, it is possible to do that. I just haven't had time to do it at this point. So maybe as a later thing, I might do that. USB tools. Um, do, do, do. I know I have it here somewhere. Setting up the Wi-Fi. Now, here we go, to get the I2C to work. So we have the Mod Probe I2C dev, which we've already seen. But if we go into um, slash etc slash modules load dot D um, directory, so if I just bring up um, the I uh, putty, where if I can find it again, where I put it. So if I go to the folder, And have a look. We've got three files in here. One is Galileo. No, that's not what I'm looking for. CD modules dash load dot t. Oh, there we go. All right, in here you'll see a number of files that are already there. So you've got Galileo. As spy dev GPIO and one that's called fake for some reason whatever that is anyway what we need to do is we need to add another file in here uh, we can call it this i2c0 dash uh, dev comp and add this con this contents here to that file just that one statement i2c dash dev save it and reboot and now you'll find that your um, I2C bus will come up automatically on reboot. So really, really simple. Just add a file in Etsy, etc slash modules dash load dot D. Call it, you can pretty much call it anything you like. I called it Galileo dash I2C zero dash I2C dev dot conf. Um, the Linux will automatically look for these when it boots up. And all you do is in that file, just put in a single statement, I2C dash dev save it and when you reboot it will automatically now do the equivalent of mod pro space i2c dash dev and it'll load that for you let me just see if i can do that i can't remember how to use vi i don't have the network connected to this uh, board yet this is just from the uh, image directly from the site you gotta have to use vi it's the only thing i know that will be there so I say vi and give it a name so we're going to call it this Copy that, and we'll put that in. Okay, and in here we want to put um, I to C dash dev. Now I pressed I first of all to go into insert mode. Uh, so just press enter. Now I think we need to go um, colon X. And there we go. So now if I do an LS, we have our I2C dev one. So because I've got the program already loaded with the sketch, I can actually now do a reboot. And it will, or the um, Arduino sketches, once you've uploaded it, it will automatically restart even after a reboot uh, because the sketch file is actually sitting there. If I go to... Um, so there is the current one, the sketch.elf is what is currently running. And then there's the old one. It always leaves the old one there as well. I guess just in case you made a mistake and you wanted to go back to it. Anyway, let's just do a reboot right on camera. And we will see if this will actually come right back up automatically um, and run the program for us. 
So that's those programs stopped while it's shutting down. <coughs> just waiting for it. There we go. Serial number. So now it's booting up. So just waiting for it to automatically start booting. I'm not going to do anything on the keyboard. We're recording everything here. What we should find is all of those displays, both the LED 8 segment and the LCD and the OLED, should start up and start working. And there they go. Wonderful. In case you're wondering why I'm starting with 9999, it's just because I was doing some testing just to make sure it was going to roll over properly. The initial demo software that I got would only actually work with one digit, um, so I had to modify it to work with all eight. Anyway, so you can see here the OLED is busy happily working. Let's just zoom in on that so we can see it. Focus. And obviously the LED is working nicely. And so is the LCD. So, without trying to make this thing overly long, I think that gives you enough information to show you how to get the SPI bus working, how to get the I2C working, and how to run and upload an Arduino sketch. Yes, I had a couple of issues there. Um, it was because my Windows machine was not um, up to date, and sometimes when Windows loads some of the drivers, uh, it starts making things go funny until you did a reboot. So once I had rebooted it, as you can see, it's now working just fine uploading to the IoT 2020. With the IoT 2020, the image out of the gate does not have the I2C tools, um, and you need to do a mod probe or add the file, as I indicated in the video, and we'll post the contents of the file into the uh, blog entries as well. Um, not very much you have to do, and if you look at my other videos and follow them through in chronological order, um, I do show you how to create the SD card image, how to boot it up, configure the network, and get Wi-Fi working, uh, either using the uh, official Raspberry Pi Wi-Fi USB dongle or using uh, an Intel Express PCI Express card, which I've shown in another video, which is actually working on that top unit right now. There's the two antennas sticking out the top of the box. And now we have it showing quite happily how to use I2C, SPI, and PWM outputs. Now, and I've also shown you just straightforward GPIO too. We did the standard blink, which was actually using pin 13, same as an Arduino. Um, and so in future videos, I'll show you how to use the analog inputs and things like that. But as I said, this is really more of a gateway device, not a edge device. So uh, while from an educational perspective, you can use it for those purposes, uh, it's not really where it's meant to be used. And I have a lot of other videos that show you how to build edge devices that would be a lot more um, economical to build for the purpose and can still communicate quite easily with the IoT 2020 as a gateway um, using MQTT or Modbus or other protocols. Um, but they'll be the subject of other videos. For now, I just wanted to show you uh, what you needed to do to get the Arduino IDE uploading and running sketches and the fact that they will survive a reboot and automatically execute again. So that's it for now. I will see you again soon. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you're on YouTube, or actually wherever you are, just go to give me a thumbs up. Provide any comments. If you need any help with anything, just leave a message and I'll do what I can. Um, as I said, this will work on the IoT 2020. It will also work on the IoT 2040. So that's it. And this was actually done from a brand new loaded um, firmware image, so I had not gone online and modified MRAA or anything else. This is just the default image with everything that's already in that image just up and running. All right, so anyway, see you next time. Bye.